All right, Billy Ray, what is the future of San Diego State's Malik Pope? Here to have that discussion and tell us what he can Mm -hmm. is the head coach of the Aztec basketball team, Coach Steve Fisher, for the first time since the Aztecs were knocked out in the semis in New York of the NIT. Coach Fisher, good afternoon. I haven't been on with you guys since then. No, and here's why. Because we like to give you a little bit of breathing room. You said you were going to get done. You were going to go to the NCAA Tournament Final Four. And then you and Angie were going to go to Florida and vacation for a little while. Have you done that? Well, I went to the Final Four, but we are yet to go to Florida. Well, what happened? We've never we're, we're, we've got the trip planned, but it's in May. Okay, so you shouldn't be on right now. Well, no, I should be on. I always <laughs> love being on with you guys. <laughs> Coach, let me ask you this question first before we get into Malik Pope, and, and you can tell us what you can tell us, but... When we talked last, I asked you this question. You said, I need to take my time and figure it out, but I'm going to ask it to get this thing started. Have you decided, are you committed to coaching San Diego State again this upcoming basketball season? I have not decided, but I am committed to do what I'm doing right now, and that's be involved in recruiting and uh, individual workouts, and uh, we'll see what happens. Why do you always say that? I don't know. (laughs) So you'll have me back on the show, I guess. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> my grandmother would always say things to me like, um, well, you know, uh, we'll see how things go. And I go, Grandma, what are you talking about? It's like tomorrow. She goes, well, but you never know between now and then. You never just know. never know. Yeah. I mean, that's that's coach. It's like, yeah, I'm in, rec- I'm in recruiting right now. I'm, I'm coaching, but mm. eh, we'll see what happens. I guess you never say never. Something like that. <laughs> All right, Coach, let's talk about Malik Pope. Can you explain to us kind of the beginning of how this process all works? You, you sort of talked us through it before he made his declaration, but how does this all come to be? I think you know that uh, this year they changed uh, what it means for underclassmen to put their name in. Always before, if you put your name in, it was either to see your name come across the scroll or you knew you were going to keep it in because you didn't have an opportunity to have even one individual workout, much less go to the combine. Uh, you had to make a declaration, I'm, I'm leaving it in or I'm taking it out by uh, maybe mid-April, maybe the 20th of April. Now you have until the 24th or 5th of April to put it in, and you have till May 24th or 5th to pull it out. And during that time, uh, I think after the due date, let's say it's April 24th, it's right around there, 25th, then they'll compile all the lists of underclassmen that have put their name in, and they'll start selecting people that they're going to invite to the Combine in the second week of May in Chicago. After that, the individual clubs will start calling people, inviting people to come in for individual workouts with that club. So... For sure, Malik's going to have opportunities to work out with individual clubs. That will start sometime around May 1st. We're hopeful that he'll get invited to the combine. I've heard that there are already up close to 200 in the 180s underclassmen that have put their name in. So a lot of people are putting their name in to see if they'll get a chance to go to the combine, to get a couple of free workouts with the NBA club, and then make a decision. How many guys and get Malik invited? One of those. How many guys get invited to the combine? You have any idea? I mean, just a rough, rough number. I, I think rough number seventy to eighty. Okay. Okay. So. Um, and that includes seniors, foreign players, underclassmen, everybody. Right. So you're talking like seventy to eighty guys out of probably more like three hundred guys, not just one hundred and eighty underclassmen. Maybe it's more. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, coach, um, what? Did you? What information did you receive in advance of Malik making this decision that told him this is the right move? All right, hold on. I think we have a little. Wait a second. We have a we have a phone issue going on. Can you hear me? Yeah, Coach. You still there? I'm back. I went through a bad spot. I guess. Okay. What what information did you and Malik have in advance of him making this decision? Well, we uh, we didn't have a lot of information. We've had some since then 
uh, in terms of what other people have said. You know, the, what we did last year where the NBA clubs get back to you and here's what we think, no guarantees, but what, you know, it might be a scout from the Clippers to general manager for the Bulls to an assistant coach for the Lakers and on and on. 19 different clubs give you some feedback. And the feedback on Malik was that – that Feedback on Malik was uh, – Malik and I have talked about it. He knows exactly what the feedback is. I think I just going to keep that between Malik and myself right now. Okay. So this decision for him to attempt to see what, what happens, you support this, of course. I do. Right. I do. Given the rules as they, stay, as they are right now. Okay. You can put your name in as many times as you want. You can pull it out by May the 24th or 5th if you don't hire an agent with uh, the ability to come back to college. So it the, makes it harder on the, on, the, on the college teams, kids that put their name in. Some of them will do foolish things. They'll hire an agent when they should. They'll wait till the very end to decide that they're going to keep their name in. And it, it, when, it, when that does happen, it leaves you with a, with a hole of the guy that you thought would possibly come back for sure not coming back. So as long as you go by the rules, there's no downside. No downside yeah. for the players. You're exactly right. Good. Do you anticipate Malik hiring an agent? No. No. So Not unless he says he's coming out. Right. So, so I guess in an ideal world, the way this plays out, Coach Fisher, just let me understand this, is he gets to go work out. Perhaps he gets some, some workouts with some teams. Maybe he's fortunate enough to get invited to the Combine. And if he's really, really ready to be an NBA player and all the information says that, that's when he would decide to hire an agent and go. But if he's still not exactly ready, hey, for him, this worked out great. He got a lot of extra work. He got more exposure. And he comes back and plays for you. Are are those the two options we're talking? That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. That is exactly the way it will hopefully play out. Would you share with us what your gut feeling is on which way it will go? No, I, you know, I want to. I'm like everybody. I want to wait and see. I'm, I'm anxious to see uh, if he gets invited to Chicago. Uh, I will be anxious to get reports back from the NBA clubs when he goes to work out with them. Uh, so I think it's a good, it's good fact finding for Malik for sure. This is all really interesting the way they do this now. It really is. You know, that, that you can come back. All right, well, listen, I got to just say I'm going to be selfish here, but I hope that he goes and finds out that he's a prospect, but he's not ready yet, and I hope he comes back and plays for the Aztecs. Well, we'll see what happens, and I hope that he makes a decision that's best for him. And, you know, we've talked before on the air. I've talked with our players. If you're – if you know you're going to be a first-round draft pick, then you have a really hard decision to make. Mm-hmm. If you know you're going to be a top-15 pick, you've got no decision to make. You go. So we'll wait and see what the, what the bulk of the information is, and then hopefully he'll have the opportunity to make an informed decision for all the right reasons. All right, Coach Steve Fisher from the Aztec basketball team on Scott and BR on the Mighty 1090. Coach? What do you think of uh, your man, Kawhi Leonard, second straight defensive player of the year in the NBA? I'm so happy and proud of what he's done. And uh, like everyone that's an Aztec fan, you feel as if you're a little part of what he's doing when he plays. And I watched the game last night, and uh, he's playing with such confidence and such swagger the right way. Uh, He knows he's good, and he's playing that way every night. Well-deserved honor, defensive player of the year, and he's uh, he's doing some things offensively that he's real close to being player of the year. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible what's happened to this kid. Two-time defensive player of the year, uh, MVP finals, MVP of the NBA finals, an NBA champion. It's just incredible what has happened to Kawhi Leonard because you talk about this as it applies to Malik Pope. I remember a guy coming to uh, Viejas Arena Sitting there, he was at the time the general manager of the Golden State Warriors. He's no longer there. By the way, that's coincided with them winning the NBA title, and now look where they are again this year. And that guy back then told me, Kawhi Leonard will be on somebody's roster, but he's he'll just be a, a guy on somebody's roster. 
little did any of us know that Kawhi Leonard was going to become one of the top players in the NBA. It's incredible, Coach. It is incredible, and then that he does, Kawhi deserves an immense amount of credit for how hard he's worked and how smart he's worked. Uh, you got to say, tip your hat to what he's done to get where he is. Yep, that's incredible. All right, Coach, well, we're all following this Malik Pope story, and I guess you'll keep us on pins and needles to, to find out whether or not you're coming back to coach next year. We'll look forward to talking to you again real soon. Sounds great. Thanks for having me, man. Always, Thanks, coach. coach. Thank you.